Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm going to present ourselves. So, Esther Leonardo, Leonardo Bisogni, Flavio Pizzari, and Martina Massimino. We're going to present our movement. Francesca. Francesca Tomei, sorry. We're going to present our movement today, um, based in Italy. It's called, in Italian, Mi riconosci, sono un professionista di beni culturali which means, do you recognize me? I am a professional in the field of cultural heritage. So first of all, it's worth mentioning that it's not a movement uh, inclusive of just archeologists, but it includes other professions in the field of cultural heritage as well. So for example, anthropologists, uh, touristic guides, uh, art historians, librarians, and as the name itself says, um, we, our main aim is to claim for um, more visibility in the media. Um, and today we're going to address the question, can cultural heritage workers and professionals occupy the middle of political and social debate? So I'm just going to say, what exactly our movement is, how it was born, how it developed, and then Leonardo is going to give some examples of how we act. So, um, in Italian, our movement is what we call uh, collettivo, so a group of activists joined together by common goals and ideas. It was born in November uh, 2015. Um, yeah, uh, as a campaign for um, a fair access to the professions in the field of cultural heritage. And since then, it has grown in numbers um, and also in results. So now we've got um, a number of, of activists covering pretty much every region in Italy, so the whole country. Um, mm-hmm. um, so in this slide we have three principles um, which are based on our own analysis of the Italian situation and which have been guiding our actions. So we think um, at the moment the relevance of um, cultural heritage is ignored by the media and especially the working conditions of the professional are pretty much unknown to external people. Um, at the same time, um, all the different professionals, not all the archaeologists, but also the other categories I listed, um, face similar problems. So we've been trying to join together all these professions uh, to find a solution um, and overturn the domino view provided by the media. Um, very briefly about our strategy. So we've got a website where we publish articles to give information. We've got, um, we use uh, very much social networks such as Facebook and Instagram. Um, we have a group dealing, for example, with graphics. And so our ways to communicate with public is through social media, videos, articles. And so these are three elements of our action. First of all, information, uh, to share information with the public and at the same time try to overturn the dominant narrative about cultural heritage and working conditions. Uh, a second element is protest. Um, and then uh, necessary is to make proposals to change the situation. So Leonardo is going to give some examples about how we act. Yeah, yeah so basically when we started, uh, we launched this movement, we had a real need to say something new and basically our analysis was much appreciated. The, the response we had was absolutely incredible because I cannot define it in another way. So I'm showing you some examples of this strategy, which is information protest proposal, which is always, of course, not 
not linear in the sense sometimes the information is a protest or proposal that's given before or joined with the protest, so it's just an idea. For the first example is basically this, this case. In, on the 2nd of January 2016, we wrote this article in our blog, which was totally new, launched uh, a month before, about the fact that the Minister of Cultural Agent of Italy was looking for volunteers to work uh, at the Colosseum in Rome for the Jubilee, and uh, we were asking with, for volunteers with highly specialized, so with um, graduations and even um, doctorships and, and so on. We wrote this article and the response has been absolutely incredible. It was shared by thousands of people because what for us, for us, it's, or at least in Italy, it's quite normal, it wasn't known by other people in Italy, the fact that at the Colosseum we were looking for volunteers. And so we started after just a month of life to be called by many journalists from all uh, over Italy. And in a month we got a, a good space uh, in uh, most of the national newspapers and on a national television. And this was the beginning of our movement because we, yeah, in the sense, we, we, we understood that people were ready to got interested in these working conditions uh, and uh, basically we did it all the time and giving you just two other examples um, uh, in Italy there is a very powerful trust uh, which is called uh, FAI and um, well this is, they, they are a trust working with volunteers but uh, we thought for years that basically they have a, a a huge, um, yeah, a good power, and they should change their practices working with uh, volunteers and they, their, the way they communicate on the media. Basically, they ignored us for two years, and so we decided to write on our blog just a simple list of questions about uh, what they do and their practices, and. Uh, they got ridiculously scared about it. Everyone, uh, everyone started speaking about it, and we got a, a meeting with the management, the governing, and uh, now they decided to listen to our requests, and uh, they promised to change their their practices. Another example is about volunteering in Italy. Um, basically, in 1993, they decided that volunteers can do basically everything in uh, museums, archives, and uh, libraries. And this led to a, a rapid this is lower uh, how do you say it? Uh, degrees of, uh, of stipends and everything. Because, of course, it's, uh, if you have volunteers who can do everything, um, of course, you don't spend much, m so much money for professionals. So we spoke about it for two years with articles and everything. We created a base and then we uh, prepared a law proposal uh, to, um, yeah, to, to, to ask the parliament, the Italian parliament, to regulate the use of volunteers in, uh, in cultural sites and uh, uh, museum. This proposal has been presented uh, to the media and the parliament in this January, and now we have a new government and everything. But we are trying to get that law because I think we think it's extremely relevant to change the the situation. So these are just three examples. You can well, okay, if you can read Italian, you can you can uh, read our site, but I don't think it's the case. But in a sense. You know, these are just three examples. Now, basically, it worked so well along with years, but now our aim has partially changed or extended. Our aim now is to change the work market rules for cultural heritage and beyond, because we think that what we are doing with cultural heritage is interesting for every kind of worker uh, around Europe. It's a matter of law, it's a matter of... Uh, 
unpaid working and uh, decrease of stipends. And the only way to do it, we think, is just becoming politically and socially relevant as a category. So basically to move the most possible amount of votes, because, yeah, politicians need to be, or want, want to be re-elected, but uh, so we think that uh, we have to try to become something like a mass movement, uh, so occupying more and more space on the media and the political debate. We think that many people are interested in uh, cultural heritage, and we are realizing that, yeah, when they know about our working conditions, they are quite surprised and shocked, and they are ready to do something uh, for us. So the question is, uh, this kind of plan, uh, we, we, we are, we are fine. <laughs> the, does it work only for Italy, or is it something which can be applied in other European countries? This is a question for all of you, we don't know. And uh, now, in the 6th of October, we will uh, get to another step because we are having uh, um, a rally uh, for culture and uh, work market in Rome, which will be the first rally uh, made by cultural workers. So with all workers of the cultural uh, field uh, all together, we don't know how it's going. We hope well. We hope very well. So, yeah, that's it.